Okay, well, let's step to the next room. Okay, the next room you enter is in the kitchen. Okay, so you go into the kitchen from your mudroom, and what's in the kitchen? Usually what I find is that when somebody moves into their home, they're so anxious to get stuff put away and to start living in their home that they don't really think logically of how they're working in their kitchen. So it's just, okay, well, this fits here, so I'm going to put this here. So you might end up with your juicer, which maybe you've used once or twice a year. It makes good juice, though. It does. It makes great juice. It's a, probably a pain to clean, and that's probably why you don't use it so often. So it's in a valuable real estate area, like right by where you do your chopping and your cooking and your food prep. And yet, something you use all the time is maybe over on the other side of the kitchen where it's inconvenient to get to it, inconvenient to put it away also. So when you do a kitchen, when you're in your kitchen, you have to really think about what you use, how often you use it, and where you're storing it. I like to think of the sink and the chopping area and the spices and my mixing bowls all together so that I don't have to move all over my kitchen when I'm cooking or baking or whatever it is I'm doing. Makes sense. But people don't set them up that way. People set it up, okay, it fits here, so I'm going to put it here. All right, so when, when we go in, for instance, and we set up a kitchen, we pull everything out and we redo the whole thing. Another thing that people do, don't do when they organize their kitchen is a lot of kitchens have those pegs for moving the shelves. A lot of people never move the pegs. But they don't realize the benefit of moving the shelf pins. The holidays are coming up. Won't I yeah. need 16 pans for all the Christmas cookies? I don't think so. I don't think so, because generally people need like one or two. You've got two ovens, right? Maybe. Maybe you have one oven. Mm -hmm. How many do you realistically need? It's another good intention. It's the, but I might need it, that gets people into the most trouble. So if I say, but I might need it, red flag should pop up? Should pop up really, really fast, you know, like sirens going off and everything. But I might need it can ruin a perfectly good person. Are there things in the kitchen that you generally find that can be pitched right away? Yes, containers, so, plastic containers. Well, where would we be without Tupperware and all those, you know, right. uh, Ziploc zip and the Gladware and all of that? Yeah. So, so the reality is, is how much do you have? How many cream cheese containers do you have sitting there? Every time you take, do carry out and you get the nice plastic containers, right. how many are you keeping? And they seal so they nicely oh, for just, a single meal. Absolutely, they're perfect. How many do you have? How many don't even have container lids anymore? How many don't even fit the right amount of food? And how big is the cupboard you're keeping them in? Well, right? I'll just go to a uh, uh, what, Bed Bath & Beyond or one of those stores and I'll buy a, a container to fit the excess containers and I can put that in the mudroom. Isn't that a solution? <laughs> um, it's a solution I've seen people try before, but it doesn't really solve anything for well, them. You should just get less stuff. Too much stuff. And it's, it's the whole concept of going and buying organizing tools that gets people into trouble. For instance, a new client will call me and say, what should I go buy for our session together? And the first thing I say to them is garbage bags. The thing I never say to them are organizing containers. Because every home has every size of organizing containers already in it in people's fits and starts to try to get organized. That's what they do. I'm going to get organized, I'm going to go to the store, I'm going to get organizing tools. So is that part of the well-intentioned but? Oh, completely. Okay. Completely. Um, Save a lot of money, never buy these organizing products until after you've until cleaned after up. Until after you've cleaned, exactly. You purge okay. first, you sort second, and then you see how you're going to contain your stuff. All right, containing is last, purging is first. Now, can I donate all that stuff? How long should I wait to donate something before it finds its way into the trash can? <laughs> well, it depends on what it is. And I always say to people, you know, even people who accept donations have standards. And I think that people have to be considerate of what they donate. For instance, if you have a pair of socks missing a mate, do not donate one sock. There's that would a, be garbage, and it's not a rag to dust with. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, or you could give it to the orphan sock fund. The, I think we, we right, should create that. A lot of people have those, you know, the uh -huh. piles. And, well, I'm going to find it. I'm going to match it up. And the reality is how, long is, how long have you had that sock and those piles of socks? You so just give it up give at it up. some point. Let it go. It's so much better to let it go than it is to hang on to the mental baggage and mm -hmm. the physical baggage of where we have found ourselves. Mm -hmm.